Well, Let's Make a Deal was a popular show back in the day when uh, the American dream was to have a brand new car and contestants could go on this uh, game show and maybe go home with the car of their dreams. First of all, the, the game show host was a very famous guy named Monty Hall. And Monty would come on to the show and he would have three doors. Here's Monty. And a contestant, that's you, would come on to the show. Monty would give you, the contestant, the chance to choose door number one, door number two, or door number three. Now behind one of those doors, only one, was your dream flash car. Bright red, sports car, very fast, it was awesome. And behind the other two doors were zonks. That was the let's make a deal word for something that you don't really want. So you had, looks like a one in three chance of getting your dream car. So suppose you pick door number one and Monty would then do the same thing every week. He would go over to the two doors you didn't pick, two and three, and he would open one of them. Let's suppose he opened door number two, and the door that Monty opened would always have behind it a zonk. So, so he knew? Well, he knows everything, right? He's the game show host. So Monty knows everything. You picked one. He opened door that you didn't pick. There were two choices for him, and he always managed to open a door that you didn't pick. And then Monty looked at you in the face and say, do you like door number one, or do you want to switch? There's only one thing to switch to. In this case, it's door number three. Are you going to stay with your choice or are you going to make that leap to something different? And very often, contestants would stand there agonized, right? So they've got some new information. So stick or switch. Stick or switch. Well, a remarkable thing about this problem, simple as it is, is that it has sparked just endless debate. Uh, one, if, someone, if you're lucky enough to find someone who has never heard about this problem before, you get a really fresh opinion, I would say your chances are 50-50 of having that person say, better to stay or better to switch. In the time of the show, I don't recall anybody ever saying there was a dedicated strategy that you should always follow. But in fact, there is a dedicated strategy you should follow. You should pick door number three. That's the answer. You should switch. You should switch every time, and that will do the best for you over the long run. In order to see that, we can flash back from these 1960s, when we had our game show, 200 years, to a Presbyterian minister, the Reverend Thomas Bayes, and Bayes has a rule that tells us exactly why it's better to switch than to stay. And what it's about is the likelihood of two things happening at the same time. The two events I want to look at here are the probability that the car is behind door number one, the one you picked initially, and the probability that Monty opened door number two, which he actually did. So we're going to write, what is the probability of X, X is going to be flash car, behind door number one, given Y that Monty opened door number two. Reverend Thomas uh, Bayes gave us a formula for this, and it goes like the following. He says that the probability of two things happening together x and y is the probability of x given that y happens, given that you know he opened door number two, what's the probability of the cars there, times the probability of y happening by itself. Okay, this is the formula for conditional probability of x given y times the probability of y. However, there's a symmetry here. The probability of x and y happening together is the same as the probability of y and x happening together. You can reverse the order, doesn't matter at all. And so I can write this another way as the probability, I'm just going to interchange the role of the variables, probability of y given x times the probability of x. I've taken the same expression, these two things are equal, and I've expanded them in two different ways. So two things that are equal to a common thing are equal to each other. I have, I'll write this again, now that the probability of x given y times the probability of y is equal to the probability of y given x times the probability of x. I need one more little row of math because I'm interested in this equation, probability of x, flash car behind door number one, given that Monty opened door number two, I've got to get that by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by p of y, cancel off here, and now I'm going to get the thing I care about alone on the left side, and I have p of y given x 
times p of x over p of y. So we're going to now analyze this equation. The probability of flash car being behind door number one, given that Monty opened door number two, is the probability that Monty opened door number two, given that the flash car is behind door number one. What is that probability? If the car is over here, okay, the car of your dreams? If the That's not the car of my dreams. <laughs> if the car of your dreams uh, is behind door number one, the probability that Monty opened door number two is 50-50, right? Because he could have opened this, and there's a zonk, and he'd open this one, there's a zonk. He had two choices. So this thing is a one half. But that's not the end of the game, right? The probability is not one half. We have the probability of x over the probability of y. So what is the probability of x? x is the probability that the flash car is behind one. Well, it could have been behind one or two or three absent information. One in three chance, it's one third. And what is the probability of y that Monty opened door uh, number two? Well, he knew that two and another one were uh, where the car wasn't, so he had a 50-50 chance of opening those things if you hadn't picked door number one. So his probability is often called a base probability is a half. So the probability that we care about, the probability that the flash car is behind door number one, is equal to one half times one third divided by one half. These cancel off, and the final answer is one third. So that says that there is a one-third chance that the car is behind the door you picked initially. That means there must be a two-thirds chance, much greater, twice as big, that the car is somewhere else. And since we know that somewhere else cannot be door number two, because Monty showed us that, it's got to be over here. So this is what you should choose. You should switch. Twice as likely to have the car behind the door that you didn't pick as the door that you did. A two-thirds probability to a one-third probability. Now if you switch, are you guaranteed to win? Absolutely not. But if you play this game over and over again, on average, you will win two-thirds of the time. So switch is your strategy and you can't beat it. One thing that uh, you might say is behind underneath all of this math with all these formulas is that the initial two-thirds chance that the car was behind door number two and door number three, got concentrated behind the door that Monty did not open. That's effectively what's happening. That's intuitively what's happening. And that, in fact, is what the mathematics shows is happening. Now, there is a way to see that in kind of a more grand way, which was not part of the original let's make a deal. But if we imagine not having three doors, but we imagine having a hundred doors. And let's imagine that we're playing the same kind of game. We have Monty over here. Uh, he is going to give you an opportunity to pick a door and your dream flash car is behind one of these hundred doors, but there are 99 zonks all behind the other doors. Now what is it that you're going to do? Well, you're going to pick a door. Say again, um, you pick door number one. Now you're feeling a little bit different than you might have felt in the case where there were three doors, because there you thought, wow, I've got a one in three chance. Here you're thinking, I've got a one in 100 chance. I'm not going to get that car. It's not behind door number one. It's probably behind one of the other 99 doors. What Monty does is he opens 98 of those 99 doors. He shows you 98 zonks, and he asks you now, do you want to switch? Well, maybe just because of the sheer numbers, this thing is a little clearer. You know that there was 99 out of 100 chance that the car was over here, and now the only door you're left with after uh, Monty shows you all those zonks is door, say, number 37. And you're thinking, this is no good, this is no good, all those doors are no good. Do I want to stay with one, or do I want to stay with 37? You can sort of almost feel the concentration of that 99% going behind door number 37, and so you switch over here, and very likely you're going to get that car and drive away. I like your car drawing. Well, thank you. <laughs> that makes more sense, doesn't it? Suddenly it seems like a no-brainer. It does seem like a no-brainer, but in fact, 
when it's on a smaller scale, maybe just because one third and two thirds are a whole lot closer to each other than one and a hundred and ninety nine and a hundred, that the, the, the point is, is obscured. And in any case, it's good to have the mathematics that helps you really see that this is the right strategy.